Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and as he always does, joining me, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for another episode of our UNC Football ISO series that we've been just running out on a consistent basis throughout the offseason. So if you want to check some of our other videos out, including the UNC Basketball ISO videos we've done as well, link to a playlist is on the front of our YouTube channel. You're pretty easy to find if you just click on it. And as always, guys, as you've heard us blast, if you're a consistent listener over here, head on over to Tar Heel Illustrated dot com and sign up for just eight thirty three a month great time to do it with all the recruiting stuff going on man there's just so much going on right now if you want to see it 99 percent of it is, is premium so if you it's either on our boards or a premium article that we run on the front but in order to see that you gotta be signed up for a premium membership and like i said you can do that for just eight thirty three a month if you want to do that link is in the description below you can click it and it'll take you right to tar hill illustrated Dot com. But AJ, let's dive into Choffrey Brown on this video. He's the guy that we're here to talk about in this edition of our ISO series. And let's just dive into him like we always do. Obviously, a guy that came in, we know he's the younger brother of De'Ami Brown, who is currently with the Washington football team right now. We know how good he was in his time at Carolina. You know, Choffrey came in a couple of years ago, redshirted his freshman year. And then last year, as a redshirt freshman, uh, appeared in all 12 games for the Tar Heels and made two starts at the wide receiver position, hauling in 15 catches for 337 yards and two touchdowns. Those touchdowns, as you'll probably remember, both came on the road at Boston College and at UVA. And one of the things that's always stood out to me, when I think of Choffrey Brown, this is what I think of. I think of De'Ami Brown's long younger brother, and I think of the amount of times I've heard, I think even De'Ami's told us a few times, yeah, Choffrey's faster than me. And we all know how fast De'Ami was as a deep threat. I mean, one of the best we've seen in Carolina, one of the best in the country over the past few years. So that's saying a lot. And it's not just coming from Diami. It's coming from other guys on the team as well. So that's what I always think of when I think of Choffrey. I think of athlete. I think of fast. I think of a kid that if he gets out in space, I mean, go look at that Boston College uh, touchdown last year, and that'll show you that slant across the middle. And he just ran away from guys. And I think that's something that that he really, really brings to the table in terms of his athleticism. Now, Absolutely. yeah, you look at who Carolina's had in their wide receiver over the past couple of years in Diami and Daz, you know, appearing in 12 games, only two starts. He hasn't had a ton of opportunities and, and not certainly not as many opportunities as we expect him to have moving forward now that those guys are gone and, and a little bit more open book in terms of who wants to step up and, and be a reliable option at the wide receiver position. But overall, in the year that you got to see Choffrey last year, what were your kind of initial thoughts on what you saw from him? He can run. (laughs) But he's not just a speed guy. I think the slant that you talked about against BC and other routes, run a lot of routes. Mm -hmm. And Diami makes no bones about it. He's like, I'm the second fastest guy at the dinner table at home. Saying so much. So, And that's saying something because Diami uh, is the only two-time thousand-yard receiver in North Carolina history. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of that by darting through the middle, past guys, leaving guys reaching. How many times you see guys reaching, they just can't get them. They thought they were closing in, and he just gets by them. Or he burns down the sideline. Choffrey's got all that. Uh, he's, I, he's got big play potential. I think he's got get your first down potential. I, I think that there's a very, very high ceiling for him. 303 snaps last year, targeted 21 times, but he had those 15 receptions. The 337 yards, which is an average of 22.5 a catch. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Pretty good, yep. And I think you'll see more of that. And he's going to be targeted a lot more this year. He's going to be part of what I think is going to be a really good wide receiver group. There's a lot of guys in there. Josh Downs could have it a huge season. Bo Corrales has already proven what he can do over time. I think he'll be a very good player. Emory Simmons has a lot of experience as someone that the staff trusts. I think, you know, Antoine Green had a really good spring. He's dealt with the, that, that the effects of that knee injury a few years ago at Syracuse that finally appear to be behind him. Choffrey's another one of those dudes. I think if you I know you're probably going to ask me, so I'll go ahead and say now. If you have to pin down who the three starters will be, I would probably say, you know, Corrales, Choffrey Brown, Josh Downs looks like it to me. But even if he's not, it doesn't really matter the wide receiver position. He's going to play. All those guys are going to get on the field and play a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, he started two games last year, whatever. It did, that didn't matter to me at the wide receiver spot. 
What matters to me is number of snaps, the targets, and can you block? Because Lottie Galloway puts a premium on blocking down field. And that is something that Choffrey actually improved last year and um, is something that if he can do really well this year, it's just going to keep him on the field that much more. Diami's in the NFL now in part because he can block. It's not just about running down the field and catching the ball. There's a lot more to it than that. And I think seeing what Diami did and him saying that Choffrey is uh, faster and some people thought coming out of high school, Choffrey was more talented, had more of an upside. There's no reason to believe that Choffrey can't put up really, really big numbers this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's that speed is so important too because you know, this is kind of going to lead into the next thing I want to ask you before we wrap it up. But you've got guys in this wide receiver room like Choffrey and Josh Downs, like we've mentioned. You know, we, as of right now, probably expect those to, to be the starters if we had to guess, if we had this based on what we've seen um, and heard throughout the spring, those two of the guys. Now, when you look at those guys, you've got two burners, really. You've got a guy like Josh Downs who, you know, can obviously do it all as well. But, you know, we saw last year in glimpses, look at that Orange Bowl, for instance. He's a guy that can take a top off of defense. And you look at Shoffrey, kind of similar in that respect, a guy that can take the top off the defense, a guy that if he's anything like his brother, like you said, faster than him, like we've, we've heard, you'd expect him to be a guy that's utilized in that respect. So, how do you expect those, you know, how do you expect a guy like Choffrey to be utilized? Do you think he's going to be considered one of those deep threats? Do you think he's going to be an all around guy? Cause you've got a couple guys in that room and those two, like I mentioned, they can, can both do it pretty, pretty successfully. Well, I think one of the things about a guy like Choffrey is you, in order for him to get, let's say a 60 yard touchdown, you don't have to throw the ball 50 yards in the air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could throw it 10 and then he runs 50. You could throw it 10 over the middle and he darts through the middle. He runs to the side. I think, I think a guy like that could be used all, a lot of different ways. He's got an NFL brother as a wide receiver. Yeah. As much as Deami learned at Chapel Hill, he's going to learn a lot. He's already learned a ton with the Redskins mm-hmm. or, or the Washington football team. I'm from the D.C. area, so it's really hard. I've, I've had to catch myself about saying that all the yeah. time. <laughs> so anyhow, he's going to continue to learn. He's, if he wants to be an NFL guy, he's got to be able to run all the routes. So I think that's a part of who he is. And I think that's actually what they're going to get a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the, the multitude of receivers mm-hmm. that they're going to run out there is you have some players going to be specialists, but you also have guys that can run all the routes. And that's what I expect from Chauffeur. He's going to be one of a series of guys who all post pretty good numbers. Whether or not he does what Yami did, I don't know. I, I think the ball is going to be spread around a little bit more than it was. De- Sam and Yami were, were tight. They threw, they, they worked out together a lot in the offseason. They had amazing chemistry. Uh, I would think that Sam and Shoffrey probably, probably got pretty good chemistry. It works out with him some as well. Mm-hmm. So in addition to the, the summer work, the player-led practices that they have. So he's a guy that that could could do it, you know, have 35, 40 catches, or he could explode and have 60, 70. We don't know. But he's in that range to be very, very useful. At the minimum, he's going to be very, very useful, and he will be – part of what I think is going to be a pretty electrifying receiving core, especially as the year goes on. Yeah, I think you've got a lot of balance to touch on the receiving core as a whole real quick before we wrap it up. I think you got a lot of balance in that room because you've you've got guys like Downs and Choffrey that have got speed and can, you know, take the top off a of defense at any given moment. You've got guys like Bo Krause who've been there, done that, um, can, you know, throw a fade to in the corner like we've seen and go up and get it in a possession receiver you can rely on. You've also got guys like Emory Simmons who've done it, Antoine Green who's shown glimpses throughout the year, and guys that have you know continued to impress throughout the spring. And that's not even hitting on a, you know Justin Olsons and a few of the other guys who go deeper into that room that can can make a can make a big impact. So you do you agree that, that that wide receiver room, while it's got some unproven talent, you know, balanced in kind of what it brings in different guys? There's a lot of high end potential there. Uh, it's gonna be really interesting to see how much JJ Jones progresses in, yeah. in fall camp in August. I think. He's a guy that could you could throw the fade to in the corner of the end zone along with Bo. So you need guys like that. But J.J. could also go get it. He, he mm-hmm. could move. So there's a lot of high-end talent in that room. There's also you know a nice mix of some older guys who either could be really good complimentary pieces or could surprise and maybe do a little bit more. We, did, we talked about that in the Emory Simmons podcast that we did uh, a few weeks ago as well. So specifically with Choffrey, Choffrey's going to be a productive player. If he stays healthy, he's going to post pretty good numbers. And the potential is there that he posts excellent numbers. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm really interested to see what kind of season he has because, 
you know, we, we, we with the receivers and Diami and Daz leaving, there's just so many yards available out there for somebody to go and get. And from the glimpses, yeah, a lot of targets, seen, yeah, a lot of targets, targets man, like a lot of targets, man. And, you know, the career high 87 receiving yards on just three catches against Wake Forest last season, kind of game I forgot about in, in terms of him having a, you know, in terms of a yardage, having a pretty big game on, on limited targets. So I think that might be a stat line you continue to see, maybe, a, you know, a handful of catches, but some big time yards in, in terms of what he can do. So, yeah, he's a guy I'm definitely going to be watching come fall camp and come the season because he's, he's fast and I like fast guys. They're fun to watch. He's a so, high end talent guy. I love high end talent guys. Cause yep. If they approach that talent level, it's fun stuff to see, man. Fun stuff to see, man. Yeah, you love to see kids reach their potential, and, and Shoffrey Brown definitely has a lot of it. But, yeah, good place to wrap this one up, AJ. Like I said, keeping these kind of short and sweet with these, I hope you guys are enjoying the insight we're bringing to these on, on trying to hit on a bunch of different players. And if you haven't seen the videos, like I mentioned, we've done, you can find that playlist on the front and also check out our basketball ISO videos as well. We've been rolling out throughout the past few months but head on over to tarlow Illustrated too if you want to sign up for just 833 a month again link is in the description but you guys know the drill i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones you know what to do like share hit that notification bell as well we upload a lot of videos especially during the off season so if you want to know when we're uploading hit that notification bell and you'll get a notification on your phone every single time and of course subscribe to our channel see you guys in the next one thanks, thanks.